Hello world and welcome. Today I will talk about a really interesting topic. Um, I'm talking about temp series data, how you can predict and forecast um, the time steps uh, into the future. So if you have some time series data, how you can actually kind of uh, do a forecast for the next year. My name is Harris and let's get started. If you like this content, uh, please hit the subscribe button or leave a like comment there. First, I'm going to import all the libraries and packages that we need for doing um, time series prediction and forecasting. So I'm using today Arima and I will tell you in a minute why. Then I'm loading the data set, which you can see here. I just took some um, time series data, you can take basically everything, everything. We can have some stock price, some sensor data. You can um, have basically everything regarding um, or depending on some time series. I took some sensor data here and we can see I have the um, TS. So this is the timestamp and the Y is uh, the value itself. Then I'm um, rename air everything. And the important part here is that I took in purpose some sensor data with um, gaps or with legs because um, I inserted some gaps within the um, time series to just show you how Arima can deal with this and how you can um, do a forecasting because Arima is basically really good in um, time series prediction when it comes um, when the data is coming with gaps. But with forecasts, um, you always have to um, fill up the gaps. So there, uh, the gaps are not allowed. So you have to fill them kind of. Um, and I will show you how. So basically what you, what you are doing is, uh, first of all, I'm dropping the ID, then I'm uh, transferring the month within uh, into some daytime, which you can see here, I'm putting it into a index because first of all, it was in column, now it's index. Then I'm filling the date gaps here because there's a missing value in my sensor data. Uh, that's why I'm filling it with the mean value. So first of all, I'm creating new uh, uh, data set or I'm filling the gaps of the data frame. And then I'm basically Um, plotting it and then you can see here here are the gaps right so I filled the gaps already um, and then I'm I had five gaps or I had five um, null values then I filled the null values with uh, the mean value of the signal here because um, yeah in the mean is roundabouts let's say six or eight something like this um, or maybe around about eight. So I filled this value with the mean value, with the win value from um, the input data. And then after this, you can see that there are no missing values anymore. And when you um, print this um, original data and the rolling mean and the standard duration, you can already see what's going on if there are some shifts and anomalies or something like this. And what I basically do, I'm using auto -rima for this. This is really good because you have the um, choice um, to um, set up some Arima or some Sarima or Sarimax um, model. So first of all, we are trying to set up um, autoregressive integrating mean, mean average um, model, so Arima model. Um, when I'm training this, I trained it already before because it takes a while. Um, and then you can also save the model and load it. That's what, I, what, that's what I'm done here because I don't want um, to wait now. So if you uh, plot the summary here, you can see actually the model um, said that the best model is 211, which you can see here, um, 211. Um, it's basically here. Um, and this has the lowest AEC value, 
so I see um, something like, um, let's say, loss. And this three values that you can see here, we have P, uh, D, and Q. Um, the P is the order of autoregressive model. The D is the degree of differencing, and Q is the order of moving average. So mostly both of both of them, the, fir the first of, first of um, the values or the parameters, the P is also looking in the past to predict the future or to um, yeah, kind of predict well itself. The Q is the moving average and it also looks back with the window function. And um, this is basically what the ARIA model is doing. It's really good at this. And after using the auto ARIMA, you can basically have the, bo the best parameters for your uh, time series. If you plot the model diagnostics, you can see on the left the standard residual. So this is kind of the difference between the Y, the original Y and the predicted Y. Um, so as <laughs> less the difference is, as better. You can see a histogram from the estimated density. You can see the normal QQ. So this is X and Y, the sample um, quantiles, and you have the um, correlogram um, depending on the time if there is some correlation going on. Then um, there's a forecast method which you can use here. I put um, because I have um, time series uh, for uh, each day, which you can see here, yeah, it's each day. It's on a day basis. That's why I put uh, three, five, six. So, which means I'm I try to do a forecast for the next year. And um, I'm doing the prediction uh, with the um, confidence interval and so on. And they can see the gray area, this con the confidence interval, the higher and um, upper series and lower series, and the green one is kind of the forecast itself. So I have a data from 2008 to 2009, and this is the forecast for the next year. Looks, um, yeah, not so accurate, right? So the, it looks just like a line. It looks like a, almost like a moving average or stuff like this. So when you put um, the sessionality inside this, and this is uh, pretty powerful as well. This is the seasonal uh, ARIMA. And you put additional lags, um, and it's also differencing the data and so on. Um, this is the ARIMA model selection. You are doing this by putting se um, the, seasonal, the seasonal part to true, which means you are using a ARIMA now for, for sure. And what you can see here, ARIMA and now with 12, which means this is also PDQ value, and the 12 stands for we are looking 12 months or 12 days. In this case, 12 days we are looking back. So this is the part where how much um, you're looking back is like window function in the past. I saw if I put it to three or four, of course, the model is not so accurate. So the 12. Um, was really good working so far. And um, yeah, let's see how it looks like. Um, the diagnostic as well, and you can see it's it looks a little bit better, right? You could see the signal was kind of moving around and then going a little bit up, and then you can see already it's going down a little bit. It looks like a little bit better. Now we are using the, after this, we are using the Ceramax model which is, uh, stands for ex exogenous uh, variables. Um, so you put the, this var variable inside and um, it's like a, some, yeah, some factor which you're inserting to make it a little bit more accurate. And um, yeah, after doing this, I also loaded my model. You have Ceramax uh, 001 and you have um, all the other parameters, um, P, Q, uh, P, D, Q, and the 12, because I'm looking also in the past. And the exogenous um, parameter, I put the index of the month, 
which is basically this. So you are putting the index of the month, so from uh, 0 to 12. And um, it's calculating everything. And it looks a little bit better even than the Sarima model itself. But um, in general, like a sum up, I would use Sarima for sure. Saramax, it's OK. Depending on small data sets, you can also work with Sarma. Um, and if you have a lot of uh, gaps within your data, you have to fill the data for sure because then you don't receive any forecasts. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So hopefully you enjoy it. Um, thanks for watching and see you soon.